Uh, Colin Kaepernick has taken no uh, shortage of grief for kneeling during the national anthem in protest of the way this country treats people of color, particularly African Americans, but I, I believe he's broadened his critique uh, considerably to include Native Americans and Hispanics and Muslims and others, um, although Muslims arguably are not people of color. It's a religion, not a... But you get my point. And uh, now we have the slave patrol. And yeah, m in many of uh, the states in the United States, our police departments, at least in the South, in Virginia, Georgia, South Carolina, North Carolina, the original police, the first police, were the slave patrols. And that mentality has spread across our country. The police in this country are very different from the police in a lot of other countries. I lived in Europe for a year. I, I, I've, I've traveled all over the world. I've, I've spent probably an aggregate, aggregate, you know, three years of my life outside this country. And it's a it's a really remarkable difference. I mean, you encounter police in Europe, and and you are encountering police almost without exception. And and I realize that there's a certain amount of, you know, oh, he's a he's a foreigner, he's he's an American, you know. Uh, and I, you know, typically when I've traveled, I've not been, although I, you know, uh, for a while there, I I had long hair and wore cheap clothes. But I, on other occasions, I've I've looked like you know, somebody who had a little bit of money, uh, at least you know not. Don't don't kick the guy, kind of the homeless guy, right? But my point is that the that the police in 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 European countries tend to be very very professional, and the police in the United States eh, it depends on the police department. It's just like the schools in the United States. You know, the schools you can go to any school in Sweden, any school in Norway, any school in Germany. You're going to get the same education, the same high quality education. In the United States, you go to a poor neighborhood. You're going to get a crappy education. You go to a wealthy neighborhood, you're going to get a good education. This is a, in, and in my opinion, this is a remnant of the days of slavery too, because the principal argument that has kept this uh, uh, local pay uh, system in place has been basically, you know, largely coming out of the South, the whole states' rights thing, and uh, we, you know, just. He, how to keep people down. And in this case, it's how to kill somebody. Terrence Crutcher, a father of four, and I've, I've read in at least one report, and the details are still coming in, but in at least one report, that he was driving home from a music appreciation class, and his car broke down. His car stopped working. So he's like trying to, trying to get the police to help him. And what do they do? They stop. This guy doesn't have a gun. He's the father of four on his way home from a music appreciation class. He, there's, and, and, you know, one officer, uh, you know, Betty, what's her name, has got her, her gun pulled on him. And, and, and another comes up and, and immediately tases him. And as soon as he starts being tased, then, then she shoots him. Two white cops killing a, a black guy, and and well, here the, the, we've got a little bit of footage of this, and I think the uh, the helicopter conversation, uh, you know, uh, well, check it out for yourself. This guy's still walking and following commands. Not for taser, I think. That's the kind of feeling that's about to happen. That looks like a bad dude too. To be honest with you. Which way are they facing? Please, one, they're facing westbound. Uh, I think he may have just been tasered. Shot fired! Ooh. Uh, 321, we have shot fired. We have one suspect down. I we need, need to end here. They need to get this uh, eastbound closed down if they could, because they're not going to be able to let anybody. Okay. Uh, police, one, we're going to need to get eastbound 36th Street North. Actually, we're just going to need 36th Street North shut down uh, at Lewis. Uh, so anyhow, that was the video. You heard, you know, the the, the helicopter guy go, "Oh, it looks like one bad dude," and uh, the other guy going, "Hey, he's not following command." The guy is walking back to his car with his hands in the air, and they shoot him. It's uh, and then and then we've got uh, Terrell Thomas, 38, in Milwaukee County Jail.
Now, the sheriff who runs the Milwaukee County Jail is this guy, David Clark. Uh, this African-American sheriff who has been giving, uh, who is at the Republican National Convention, all decked out in his badges and buttons and, and ribbons and things and, and saluting and, and uh, speaking on behalf of Donald Trump. And he uh, apparently, I mean, this, this uh, fellow Terrell Thomas, uh, who was found dead in a Milwaukee County jail cell on April 24th, was found, you know, the, the, the coroner ruled it a homicide. He died of dehydration. They turned off the water to his cell and they would not bring him drinking water. Other inmates heard Thomas beg for water in the days before he died, the Journal Sentinel reported in July. The Huffington Post, this is an article from the Huffington Post uh, by Ryan Riley, uh, has been tracking jail deaths more than 800 in the years since Sandra Bland died in a Texas jail in July of 2013, July 13th. Uh, the coroner root labeled this a homicide, meaning that, a, that a, a, the, it was caused by the actions of another person. Uh, David Clark, the sheriff in Milwaukee County Jail, which is, you know, this is a different place from where this, where this guy was, was shot, but where Terrence Crutcher was shot. But it's like, I hope in some small way or in some, you know, real way that white Americans are starting to figure out that their life, their life experience in this country, particularly when it comes to, to interactions with authority figures, in this case, police departments, police officers, that, that if you're white, your experience of growing up in this country is very different than had your skin simply been darker, regardless of how wealthy your parents are, regardless of how you know, where you, where you were born or grew up, regard, regardless of anything. I mean, yes, a certain amount of money can buy a certain amount of insulation from this kind of craziness, but this is baked into the cake. This is part of America. And this is, and, and this is the part of America that Donald Trump is celebrating. Congressman Joel Walsh, former Congress, he's he, one term member of Congress. Then he became a right wing radio host and started making racist comments on the air. They pulled him off for a while. I think he's back to being a right wing radio host now. He tweeted last month, if I had a bowl of Skittles and told you three of them would kill you, would you eat handful? No, this is our refugee problem. And, you know, and then Don Trump Jr. tweeted out a picture of a bowl of Skittles and said, if I had a bowl of Skittles and I told you just three would kill you, would you eat a handful? That's our Syrian refugee problem. So Joe Walsh is pointing out that Don Trump Jr. stole his racist meme. Well, the racist meme didn't originate with Joe Walsh, who himself, you know, has done a pretty good job of demonstrating his, uh, shall we say, lack of ability to, to empathize with anybody who isn't of European ancestry. I mean, it's, it, it, it's, it's a totally bizarre situation. A spokeswoman for Wrigley America, which makes Skittles, said, wait a minute, Skittles, oh, she didn't say, wait a minute, I did. She said, Skittles are candy, refugees are people. We don't feel it's an appropriate analogy. But wait, there's more. Originally, the analogy, which is a racist analogy, it started out back in 1946 in a newspaper in Germany called Der Stürmer. Der Stürmer was published by a guy by the name of Julius Streicher. And Julius, Thre Julius Streicher was executed as a, war prison as a war criminal at the Nuremberg trials. But in his newspaper, or, or in, in a book that, that he had published, he tells the tale of what he calls the poisonous mushroom. Quote, just as poisonous mushrooms spring up everywhere, so the Jew is found in every country in the world, the story's mother explains to her son. Just as poisonous mushrooms often lead to the most dreadful calamity, so the Jew is the cause of misery and distress, illness and death, end quote. So that's where this began. From there, it migrated into the right-wing internet with M&Ms, 
and reference to the brown M&Ms and people of color and all this kind of stuff. But then after Trayvon Martin got killed, if you do a, a, a Google search on Skittles Trayvon meme, you will find just this freak show of graphics and comments from white racists using Skittles to, to, to trash Trayvon Martin. And so then Joe Walsh takes the Nazi meme that's been turned into the white supremacist meme. I mean, it was a white supremacist anti-Semitic meme in Germany. They turned it into a white supremacist anti-black meme or anti-immigrant meme in the United States. First, first anti-African-American, and then Joe Walsh turned it into anti-immigrant, and then Don Trump said, oh, that's cool. White supremacy are us, right? Let's turn this into our meme. Well, he didn't say white supremacy or us, obviously. He just tweeted out that graphic, complete with a tr Trump-Pence logo and make America great again. Now, what, what they really mean is make America white again. That is, that is the beginning and end. That's the entire essence of the Trump campaign. What a, what a mess. And, and, and the Trump campaign and people like Donald Trump are doing nothing but making this situation worse. We'll be back with your thoughts on the issues of the day right after this. It's 19 minutes past the hour.